The darkest, toughest winter this country has ever experienced since the 1930s Great Depression has just started. A new round of lockdowns is about to wreak havoc on hundreds of thousands of small businesses across the nation, pushing workers to unemployment days before a period that used to be marked by celebration and festivities. Americans are about to lose the aid that's been helping them to stay afloat during the current recession. Many are having to make aching decisions in face of their lack of income and growing debt. Living paycheck to paycheck, more than 60% of the population is about to face major struggles as the economic activity freezes once again. Over 33 million are already under stay-at-home orders, and many more are to come since we seem to be at the worst peak of the outbreak ever registered. In today's video, we're going to expose the damaging effects of the shutdown of our economy to our businesses and to our lives. So, welcome to today's Epic Economist video. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, subscribe to our channel to keep updated with future videos. Some of us were already aware that this was going to be the most difficult winter for the U.S. economy, but it's safe to say that many couldn't imagine they would be forced to stay locked indoors all of a sudden, as new strict restrictions continue to be implemented every day it passes. Amid a tragic spike in confirmed viral cases and hospitalization rates, several governors decided that the best they could do to prevent the situation from spiraling out of control would be to enforce rigorous lockdowns that have been choking the life out of our economic activity. In California, Governor Gavin Newsom has issued a stay-at-home order on Southern California and the San Joaquin Valley and about 33 million Californians, which represents 84% of the state's population, are going to have their right to free movement temporarily removed, being impeded from gathering indoors and outdoors, and having their daily lives significantly disrupted, since hundreds of thousands of businesses are being obligated to shut down their operations. Additionally, in the coming days, five Bay Area counties will also be under lockdown restrictions, despite the rate of cases hasn't yet reached the limiting level at which such action is mandated by the state. The Orange County Supervisor Lisa Bartlett has described how some business sectors are being unfairly punished by the new regulations. Restaurants and theme parks have been forced to either completely shut down their activities or reduce operations in order to prevent further contagion, a matter that should be the government's responsibility through the inaction of efficient education about safe health measures and effective public policies that could indeed help to bend the curb has turned out to be a huge bill that's going to be ultimately paid by small business owners. A local restaurant owner named Keegan Hicks has pointed out that outdoor dining as long as the restaurant is taken the proper protocols, is not responsible for the spread of the current virus. Hicks affirmed to understand why these measures are being taken and that he does understand the burden frontline hospital workers are carrying. However, he states that when his restaurant reopened in May, there were no cases that stemmed from his customers or his 60 employees. He said, we believe complete industry shutdown is outrageous. We will comply, but we hope that our local legislator and at the state level will work on a variance for outdoor dining, as long as outdoor dining is being done responsibly by customers and restaurants, he added. His assertion outlines that there are indeed alternatives for the shutdowns, but authorities waited for the situation to get calamitous to start taking action. And now that hospitals are completely overwhelmed, governors seem to think it's reasonable to radically close some sectors of the economy without pondering about the consequences. 
Last Monday, after Los Angeles County suspended outdoor dining, a lot of backlash was seen on social media, a video of a restaurant owner explaining the devastation the rules were causing on her eatery, while a nearby movie shoot continued open and caterers were serving food to people under outdoor tents. That's caused a lot of commotion. I am losing everything, she said. Everything I own is being taken away from me. A new SFGate report featured several statements of small business owners that have operated in California for generations and are now finding themselves on the verge of extinction. Rory Cox, the founder of the newly formed San Francisco Small Business Alliance, said to be talking with numerous small business owners around the city, and every story is sadder than the next. Everyone is like, I wake up every day and I don't know how much longer I can do this. I had 60 employees, but now all I have is six, or now it's only me. These are family businesses. These are moms and dads, brothers and sisters. I feel firmly we're the backbone of the city and they're destroying us. They're ripping us apart. They're tearing up the heart and soul of the city, he told the newspaper. Several Bay Area small businesses that survived the first round of lockdowns but were left hanging by a thread are currently facing their inevitable downfall. During the first time, Outdoor dining was still allowed if owners and customers followed safety protocols, but this time around, there is no compromise. The new regulation expressly says that apart from takeout orders, all outdoor dining operations have to be shut down. There does seem to be some evidence that indoor dining may pose a risk to some people, noted Tony Granieri, owner of two Oakland restaurants. That said, there is no conclusive evidence that outdoor dining does. It actually seems these sorts of draconian measures are pushing people into unsafe situations in private homes, where safety guidelines cannot be guaranteed, enforced, or even expected. The truth is, in spite of the strict rules, people didn't stop to gather. They're just choosing different kinds of locations. Most of these private reunions have little to no regulation at all regarding health and safety measures, which shows how the governmental response hasn't been actually successful in mapping and controlling the surge of viral cases. We constantly hear that the spread is occurring through private parties, and yet we small business owners doing everything we can to uphold the health standards are being forced to cut staff and close down without any evidence that we are contributing to the spread," said Sean Sullivan, owner of The Port Bar, also in Oakland. On the same note, Danica Freitas, the owner of the four Danica's Real Food Kitchen locations across the East Bay, has expressed how this is the worst possible time for another shutdown. She says that at this point, there's no other option other than reducing staff. Jenica emphasized being forced to shift to takeout only at a time when we were counting on the holiday increase to help us get through the rest of the year, leaving so many people unemployed right at the holidays. It is truly heartbreaking. Meanwhile, Governor Newsom has been bypassing his own order to do whatever he pleases. He was spotted visiting the famous restaurant, The French Laundry, just days after passing the new rules. Evidently, his behavior sparked discontentment amongst owners whose businesses are on the ropes due to the lockdown. That's the case of Garth Gilmore, who owns Quovo Solutions, Inc., that's a home wireless and security provider. He revealed to SF Gate that it feels like the state and local government are doing everything possible to push these businesses into bankruptcy. We employ people who depend on us for an income and at least some sort of security. We in turn depend on them to do their jobs and help us stay in business. We have governors and local officials that espouse rules that they don't follow. None of them are dependent on a paycheck from a small business. None of them live paycheck to paycheck, but a vast majority of California does. And it's the vast majority of California that pays income taxes, sales taxes, and votes, Gilmore highlighted. 
In fact, due to the massive wave of layoffs prompted by the shutdowns, a recent survey found that one in four Americans, or nearly 63%, have disclosed not to feel that their income is stable. Living paycheck to paycheck since March and without any further federal aid on the horizon, a quarter of the respondents to the poll affirmed they've built up over $10,000 in credit card debt while covering their expenses. The situation is dire for owners and workers, and the only businesses that win in these close downs are the big ones. Amazon, Safeway, Taco Bell, etc., wrote one of the owners interviewed by the newspaper. Seems like maybe they're trying to squeeze the little guys out. Another Californian bar proprietor named Robert Carroll has maintained they've been left with no options and essentially no hope for the future, saying, all we want is a chance to maintain our business. If you've never had a dream taken away, there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, it's the worst feeling in the world, he said. What used to be the most festive part of the year is now becoming increasingly marked by the struggles of millions of Americans who are being forced to make aching decisions in the face of the growing number of layoffs during this holiday season. Each number on these rates has a name and a story, just as described by an NBC article that exposes the troubles of Tina Morton, who recently had to choose between paying bills or buying a birthday gift for her child. While some others, like Theresa Green, are falling further behind on rent, or just as the case of Sylvia Solids, who had her electricity cut off. These workers have been relying on unemployment benefits that are about to expire the day after Christmas. The assistance has helped a considerable share of the population, but it hasn't been enough to effectively protect some of them against eviction and hunger. For instance, Solitz has informed that she already received an eviction notice, even though she's one of the few that's still collecting the benefits with four children, the money doesn't go very far. The day I get it, it's already gone because my kids need so many things, she explained. Of course, I have to pay a portion to whatever bill I have, so that way I can stretch it out. But every time another check comes in, it's another bill. Just like her, Numerous workers were counting on external help to find means to survive. Authorities have stripped away any real prospects for an economic recovery with the enforcement of new lockdowns. And Congress doesn't seem to bother in enacting another stimulus relief to ease the pain of those most affected by the economic downturn. They're basically gambling with us, said Solitz. At this stage of the crisis, 40 million are on the brink of eviction. 54 million are dealing with hunger. The senior fellow at the Century Foundation, Andrew Stetner, said that the coming homelessness crisis is a factor of major concern that should have been addressed with a lot more care. It's a terrible, unforced policy error to make. It'll slow the recovery that we're having by cutting off these benefits so early, he pointed out, referring to the end of federal programs. As economy writer and analyst Michael Snyder stated in his latest article, even in the most wildly optimistic scenario imaginable, it is hard to imagine how we could possibly avoid such a painful winter. What we're heading into is not just another temporary economic setback. Sadly, the truth is that our entire system has started the process of completely melting down. Now millions upon millions are now left to struggle with the effects of a crisis that was perfectly avoidable. And unfortunately, there will be a lot more pain for our great workers and our once great nation over the next chapters of this devastating economic collapse.